All right, now one of the most important things that you need to do in algebra is solve equations and inequalities. But uh, when you add in absolute value like we have right here, well, things get more interesting. And if you're not careful, you can easily make a mistake. All right, so let's see if you can figure out the answer to this uh, problem. So we have the absolute value of negative r over 9, and this is greater than 2 thirds. All right, so if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to share the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to fully explain how to solve this absolute value inequality. All right, so let's take a look at the answer. The correct answer here is the following. R is less than negative 6 or R is greater than 6. Now, I'm going to show you the graph uh, to the solution here, but uh, if you got something and you're not sure if you got the right answer, because, you know, there's different ways you can express uh, this, uh, these intervals, if you will. But uh, if you think you have the right answer, well, I'll show you during the video, you know, the graph of this uh, solution, and we'll talk about some other things as well. But uh, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face in the A+, and you'll be like, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm not sure what's going on. Well, this is really important stuff. Matter of fact, uh, let's go ahead and get started right now. Okay, so how do we solve an absolute value inequality? Well, the first thing we need to do is to rewrite this absolute value inequality as what we call uh, into a compound inequality. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to take what's inside the absolute value. Now, there's some other conditions here as well. In other words, I could make this more of a uh, more complicated, but we're just going to stick to this basic problem. For example, if I had two absolute value of x over three minus nine is greater than or equal to, let's say, 11, then I would have to do some additional steps, uh, namely, isolate the absolute value part of this inequality before we take this uh, particular step. So I'm kind of just focusing in on what we're doing on this specific problem. But if you need help with absolute value, whether it's uh, equations, inequalities, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel. Plus, you really want to, you want to check out like my full-on Algebra 1 course in my Math Help program. Okay, but the first thing we need to do is take what's inside this isolated absolute value. Okay, so we have our absolute value on one side of the equation and a number on the other side. So if you have uh, your absolute value equation in this format, okay, or this at this uh, point, now you might have to do some cleanup work before it's at this point, but in this particular problem, oops, I gotta erase my three, uh, yeah, we are ready to go. So the first thing we're gonna do now, okay, is get this thing out of this absolute value by putting what's inside the absolute value function in the center. Okay, so we're gonna write that, and you're gonna just basically follow this procedure, okay? Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this uh, two-thirds, well, let me just actually uh, back up here because there's a lot of different things going on. I'm dealing with the greater than symbol, so I'm gonna write that symbol here, and I'm also gonna write it here on both sides of what I just took out in the middle, All right? So just follow this, um, kind of uh, steps that I'm kind of laying out for you right here. So again, I want to take what's inside the absolute value function, which is negative r over 9. I want to put that in the middle, and I'm going to surround it by the same uh, inequality symbol. So this is a greater than symbol. I'm going to put it here and here. Okay. So if you understand that, let's talk now about the two-thirds. So the two-thirds, I'm going to keep whatever's uh, this number. I'm going to put it right here. There's no change there. And then I'm going to put the negative of that number, which, of course, would be negative two-thirds over here. Okay. All right. So you really need to kind of understand this setup. Okay. Uh, now, if you understand what I just told you, okay, again, take what's inside the absolute value function, put it in the middle, keep the same inequality symbols going in the same direction, uh, put this number there and the negative of that number here, then we are ready to go because what we're dealing with at this point is what we call a compound inequality. So to solve absolute value inequalities, you need to be able to solve basic linear um, 
linear inequalities and what we call compound inequalities, those inequalities that deal with and and or statements. Okay, so you don't study compound, uh, or sorry, you don't study absolute value inequalities until you master these type of inequalities. Again, if you need review with any of this stuff, just check out like my algebra one course. But now what we need to do is deal with this compound inequality. All right, so let's talk about that now. So basically what we're going to do is you can kind of think of it as solving for R, okay? In other words, we want to get R in the middle all by itself, all right? So we want, it's, we have a negative uh, R over 9. What we want is just an R in the middle, okay? So we have negative uh, R over 9 and we want R. So how can we make that happen? Well, what we're going to have to do now, before we continue on, please consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help me help as many people as possible on YouTube. Now, my channel is all about trying to make math clear, understandable, and interesting. Also, I'm trying to encourage people that are having a tough time in math to never give up. So if you enjoyed this content, again, hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well so you can get my latest videos. It is multiply this thing by the reciprocal. Okay, so here this is negative r. It's really negative 1r over 9. So if I multiply negative 1, 1 ninth r, okay, or you can kind of think of negative, negative 1r over 9, by, if I flip this right here, negative 9 over 1, if I do this, what's going to happen? Well, this is a negative times a negative. It's positive. The 9s are going to cross cancel, and I'm going to be left with an R, okay? So again, you got to be familiar with uh, solving compound inequalities. So that's what I need to do. I need to multiply, okay, this uh, expression, negative R over 9, by negative 9, or negative 9 over 1, because we are dealing with fractions, to get to an R. Now, no, I know I'm being redundant, but I want you know, I really want you to make sure you understand what's going on. So now, what I need to do is whatever I had to do in the center, okay, of this compound inequality, I need to do on both sides, okay? So if I had to multiply the this negative R over 9 by negative... Uh, negative 9 over 1, I got to multiply both of these numbers on the um, outside of this uh, compound inequality as well. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about the next thing we need to be very, very, very mindful of when it comes to inequalities. As a matter of fact, let me just show you right here with a basic example. So let's say I have two x's less than 8, okay? Uh, I'm going to actually have, uh, actually let me show you uh, Three quick little examples. 2x is less than 8. Um, negative 2x is less than 8. And negative 1 half x is less than 8. Okay, so here, the next step when you're dealing with inequalities, the main, main idea, uh, these are simple uh, linear inequalities, but basically, if you want to um, solve an inequality, you got to essentially use the same steps as you solve an equation. So here, I have if I have 2x is less than 8, all I need to do is divide both sides of the inequality by 2, so x is less than 4. No problem there. And notice nothing happened with my inequality symbol. But here is the big, big thing you always have to remember when you're dealing with inequalities. If you divide both sides of the inequality by a negative number, like in this situation here, I have negative 2x is less than 8. I'm going to divide both sides of the inequality by negative 2. I'm going to get x. Now, what happens? Well, anytime you divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, the inequality symbol reverses. Okay, you can never forget that. So it's going to go from a uh, less than to a greater than. You have to reverse that inequality symbol, not all the time, okay? Only when you're dividing both sides of an inequality by a negative value or multiplying both sides of an inequality by a negative value. So here, negative one-half x is less than eight. I can multiply both sides by negative, um, uh, let me just kind of erase this all right here. So to solve for, or get x by itself, I can multiply both sides of the equation by negative 2 over 1. Okay, that's the same scenario. So when you divide or multiply both sides of, the, of an equality by uh, a negative value, you still reverse. And so multiplication as well, so this would be x is less, greater than um, negative 16. 
Okay, so I'm put a little negative two in there. So I'm kind of being a little bit sloppy, but hopefully you understand what's going on because that's extremely important that you understand this because if you don't understand this, you won't be able to take this prompt to the next level. Okay, so let's go back to our original compound inequality. Uh, we understand, okay, to get R by itself, I need to multiply that by negative 9 or negative 9 over 1 because we're dealing with fractions. So I need to multiply everything by negative 9. So I'm thinking to myself, hey, I'm multiplying by negative numbers here, okay, the inequality by negative numbers. So I need to reverse these inequality um, symbols, okay? So I'm going to go from greater than to less than, okay? All right, so let's see what happens when we uh, simplify in the middle, negative uh, R over 9 times negative 9 will just be R. Okay, and then here I have negative 9 times negative uh, 2 thirds. Negative times negative is positive. 9 times 2, 18. 18 divided by 3 is 6. And then here I have 2 thirds times negative 9. So that's negative 18 divided by 3 is negative 6. So this is the answer. Okay, now if you did express your answer this way, we have r is greater than 6 and less than negative 6. That is fine, but this doesn't, you, we got to be careful with this, right? Because we have a positive number on this side and we have a negative number over here. It's supposed to be negative numbers over here and positive numbers over here. So we have to interpret this for what it really is. Okay, so this is all R's that are greater than 6 or all, uh, all the R values that are less than negative 6. So this is an or situation. And you can better see that graphically. So... If I have negative 6, negative 6 is located here. Here is positive 6, right? I could have thrown in here, hey, also graph this solution here. So all, all R's greater than 6 are in this direction, and all R's that are less than 6 are in this direction. So this is an OR graph, okay? An OR graph. So it's these numbers or these numbers, these sets of numbers or these sets of numbers. So this is why the solution is the following. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these courses right here. So pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra. But uh, if you are further along in mathematics, then you may want to check out my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. Now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math algebra and geometry in this course i'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video all right so with all that being said i definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures thank you for your time and have a great day